Lunch in the morning, lunch at night, lunch whenever you feel that it's right. There's no bad time for lunch. Also, time isn't real. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Youngblood Monday Lunch. It's the new play podcast from Youngblood, the company of young playwrights at the Ensemble Studio Theater. Coming to you from a lovely, snow-dappled New York City. I don't know what the weather will be like when you are listening to this new play, but right now, it is uh, big, puffy, fluffy flakes of snow coating the city of New York, making it look pretty for the three and a half minutes that snow in New York looks pretty before it turns gray and slushy. My name is RJ. I'm here with Graham Gillis. (sighs) (laughs) Graham Gillis, who is melancholy in the face of the prettiness of the snow. Uh, together we run Young Blood here at Ensemble Studio Theater. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> I feel like we're going somewhere. Graham, what, uh, what's the matter? What's the oh. matter there, buddy? Oh, hi, RJ. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, don't mind me. We, we, we'll talk about it later. You, you finish your introduction. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. This is the fourth, uh, this is the fourth, podcast episode the fourth new play of this uh little season this little cluster of new plays that we're releasing graham uh do you want to talk about this little well yeah something emotional is happening uh what's what's going on what's going on there friend i just this has been such a good batch of podcasts and this is the last one well, we're not going to, yeah. I'm going to miss it. You know, I'm going to miss, you know, ever since they gave me a microphone, I feel like we got a new, <laughs> a good like rhythm going with our kibitzing and our horsing around and our tomfoolery. And now it's, our kibitzing has improved. Now it's over. It's over. It's over. But Graham, isn't the message, uh, of winter and spring, uh, that that which goes dormant comes, comes to life again. I don't know what you're talking. I don't know what you're getting at, man. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, just like uh, just like all the greenery dies in the fall, Grandma gets covered in a in a puffy and fluffy blanket of of white snow. Within a couple weeks, or at worst, a couple months, we're going to see little little green shoots, and it's all going to come back. We're going to see the daffodils first, and then the forsythia bushes uh, are going to turn yellow, and before you know it, there's going to be a riot of life and plant life and. Uh, you know, the return of a thriving time. So Man, I feel like... What are you even talking about? I feel like, if you think about it, the podcasts are going to return to life. There's going to be more green shoots, Graham. They're going to poke up through the snow. They may be gone for a couple weeks or a couple months, but pretty soon, my friend, the forsythia bush of new theater in podcast form will burst into bloom. Can you can you guarantee that? Can you fill in some details about that? I feel like in our current world, Graham, nothing is guaranteed, but I will say <laughs> Oh my god. I will say. <laughs> I will say that right now, everybody, we are in the process of putting together a whole new season of the podcast. What? You're They're really? writing new plays. Holy God, really? We're reading them. Oh man. We're gonna we're going to put directors and casts with them. Oh, that's and the we're going to do a whole new gaggle of new plays for that you, everybody. That is the best news. Oh, you've been holding out. It's, wow. it's amazing that that you somehow completely authentically didn't oh, know that. Oh, jeez. I got a lot on my plate. You know, I've been sneaking around, sneaking around, putting together was podcasts. This, 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 which is particularly... Was this a surprise for me? Wait if you're Graham, if you're excited about that, wait until you hear. Uh, they're not just any podcasts. These are podcasts in collaboration with the EST Sloan Project, oh, man. my friend. Oh, it's the oh, it's the other program you run. That's the best at EST. We're gonna do plays about oh, science. Jeez, everybody got together. That's, oh, that's so yep. great. Snuck around on you. Oh man, put it together. Oh, I'm getting a little yeah. for Klimt. Gosh. <laughs> so everybody, both you. And Graham Gillis have that to look forward to oh. in a couple months time. Every- we're going to be coming at you with some plays about science <sighs> fed straight into your eardrums. Everything's coming up podcasts. <laughs> Everything's coming up podcasts, even before the daffodils. <laughs> oh, thanks, RJ.
<laughs> no problem. If you like grammar feeling spiritually refulfilled uh, by by that strange and authentic little exchange. <laughs> And more to the point, if you're feeling uh, rejuvenated and fulfilled by having uh, new plays delivered into your electronic device, um, give us a little give us a little help making that happen. Direct yourself to ensemblestudiotheater.org slash lunch money. That's ensemblestudiotheater with an R E dot org slash lunch money. Um, and you can there's a little donation button there. If you feel like it, you can give us a little help putting these together. We would really, really appreciate it. Before we start today's play, we want to acknowledge that Ensemble Studio Theater is located on Lenape Hooking, along with the rest of New York City. That is the unceded traditional territory of the Lene Lenape people. We at EST want to acknowledge the Lenape and pay respect to them and to all indigenous peoples that continue to live, work, create, and contribute here in Lenape Hooking and across the continent. EST would also like to take a moment to acknowledge America's cultural legacy of exploited, underpaid, and forced labor, which has historically fallen disproportionately on Black and African diasporic peoples, on Indigenous peoples, on people of color. We want to acknowledge the ongoing fight for fair wages and humane working conditions. It continues to this day, including in the field of theater. ESD is in the process of a community-led re-examination of how we work together, how we create work together. We look forward to building to a more equitable future. And now, everybody, we couldn't be prouder to present the Youngblood debut Woo! of Nia Akila Robinson. This is her play, Ebony and Nikisha. Hi. Hi. Did you forget something? Well, no. Oh. May we come in? Of course. Is everything all right? It was a beautiful service, Mrs. Robinson. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Every Harlemite showed up today. The wake felt like a party. But it was missing one thing. The pie. The pie. I have one saved, her last, in the fridge. Oh, my God, no. Save that. Sit. Split it with family instead. You see any family hanging around? Wasn't the pastor great? I didn't know Barbara was religious. She was, we were. I am, she was. (laughs) God loves us all, that's for certain. Right. Is whole milk all right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, any plans for the shop? Thank you. Oh, my God, Ebony. Too soon. Why? You want to run it? Me? No, me. Me, right? Yeah, you. No, she couldn't do that. Here we go. What? Drink all the haterade. Choke on it, Nikisha. I don't have any plans yet. No drama, please. Just eat. Sorry. Sorry. Is mm. that why you came? Mm. Oh, mm. oh, this is oh, the by pie. far the best Christmas Ooh. pie. Mm. Oh. Wow. Thank you. <gasps> it's mm. the last one. Oh, save this last fourth. Seriously. It's fine, really. She would have wanted me to share it. It brings me back to the competition. Hmm. Strange protocols this year. No audience, everyone six feet from another. It's all different now. Not competing last year broke me. Me too. Honestly, Nakisha, can you stop repeating everything I say? I literally said me too. I didn't say not competing last year broke me. That's what you said. I didn't say that. I'm just saying, just say how you feel. How I feel is what I said. Me too. You eat as friends. Mrs. Robinson, I really think this pie is amazing. Mm, Amazing. I said that already. I remember the day when you and Barbara first opened Obama's year. Oh, wait. 
Didn't Sharpton come? I should have taped that picture to the board I made for the funeral. Barbara loved Al. Me, not so much. Oh, there's plenty more milk in the fridge if you want it. I'll be right back. Just a minute, Nikisha, so we can get out of here. Ebony! Shut up, you're loud. Delusional. I win every year. Not in 19, you didn't. I win every year. I win every year. Shut the fuck up. It been 10 years in a row that year. And you lost. Your huge ego stiffened your mouth talking all that shit. I have every right to talk shit. I'm the best. You're a loser, Ebony, because I won in 19. You won once. And I won last week. You know it. Let's get out of here and leave Winnie alone. No. We can come back and ask for it after she mourns for a bit. You don't care to know then? Yeah, I want to know. You were the one who whispered in my ear just an hour ago. Ebony, don't you think a 2021 champion deserves the last drumstick? You're insecure. We don't actually know who won, Ebony. I was just trying to make you laugh. You ruined my reputation. What? My reputation? I was runner-up for nine years. So boo-hoo, bitch. Let's do it now. Now? Cut up the pie. It isn't ours. Barbara would have wanted this. Smell it. The last fourth of its kind that remains on Earth. Doesn't it smell good? Mm -mm. That spice, that rum and glaze, that Christmas. Smell it, Nikisha. Stop it. Come on. Fuck it. I'm gonna cut it. Stop. Stop it now. You're scared. Scared? Your heart's not in it. That's why you lose everything. Then why do I have a crown in my house? We eat, pound the table when you're done. Record it on your phone. We don't have to use Winnie's last pie. Let's go to Superfood Town. It's Barbara or it means nothing. Clean mouth. No bits left. Show your tongue to the camera. What do we say? To Winnie? Yeah. I heard my name. Why the fuck is my pie cut up? Here's Barbara and Al. She looks happy, doesn't she? My girl. Were you... Were you going to eat the rest of my pie? Why would you do that? So the, uh, the competition from last week uh, ended in Barbara's death. Right. Um, and by the time both of us were done, she was... Uh, 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 really, what I'm saying is she, uh, she couldn't announce the winner because uh, she... <laughs> had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. But this year... Barbara recorded the competition on her camcorder, and we just want to know who won. You want the video that has my wife dying on it to see who won the pie competition. No one was in the room to call it. Everyone who self-eliminated had to exit the community room. You two are so... So, so... Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Barbara recorded this year because of you, Ebony. Remember the breakdown you had in 2019? You couldn't believe Nikisha won over you when Barbara called it. You were tugging on her shirt for a rematch, pushing her, because you didn't believe Nikisha won. Record it next year, you said. I thought that was bullshit. We all saw you lose. No. No, you will not see that video. It means a lot to me, Mrs. Robinson. My wife spent her last moments with the two of you. Exactly why I want to know who won. Why is my pie cut up? I'm mourning too. I have nothing to look forward to anymore. Oh, please. I know I'll see photos of you at the IFOCE competitions next year. I will never enter into another pie competition oh. as long as I live. Mm. I won't. Why? My mom and I brought Christmas pies from this brownstone before she had the store. It's the only happy memory I have. Oh, I'm so did she die? No. We just didn't argue as much when buying pie from Barbara. Promise to never compete again? I'll consider it. If I have to watch my wife die in a recording, something you love has to die too. Oh, promise. Um, 
The promise. Promise her. But I only won once. I just got good. Why do I have to stop? How can I just let that go? Get over yourself. Give me all your crowns then. No. That's the only way. You're bugging. You're fucking bugging. Nine crowns. That's what I want. Oh. What? Stop eating mm. Winnie's last slice. Mm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, mm, mm, you can mm. have all my crowns, mm. Keisha. Shameless. Mm. And this is why I stopped talking to you. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> this is why you have no friends. As someone who chose to be your only friend, you ruined it because you do shit like this. You are obsessed with me. Oh. <laughs> Get over yourself, only friend. I have friends. River is my friend. River sounds white. River likes me a lot. When's the last time you saw River? <sighs> River's your coworker, aren't they? If I wasn't complaining to you about my life, if I wasn't suffering, you weren't interested. And finally, I'm happy. I get good at something for once in my life, and you stop being my friend over it. You slept outside my apartment before competition since 09. Slid death threats under my door. Mailed me shrimp and grits in the morning before competitions, even though you knew about my allergy. Attached pie-shaped post-it notes to the back of my shirt. Put a thumbtack on my seat in 2019. You're so fucking lucky I didn't sit on it, you freak. Do you remember that? I was happy. You were a demon. Cursing me out, calling me names. You. 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 You poisoned me in 2019. You put crushed up Benadryl in my nest quick. Grainy. My milk was grainy. I remember. You would have been a tyrant if you won. I couldn't let that happen. How'd you know? I had hives last night. Didn't know where it came from. I thought maybe I was bugging out because I had to go to Barbara's funeral the next day. I ran to Dwayne Reed, purchased a pack of Benadryl tablets for the first time. I could never put my finger on 2019. Why I lost, I never lose. My mom moved out of our apartment that year and moved in with my aunt that stays in Brooklyn. Did she want to? No, she did because the asbestos was getting to her, giving her horrible headaches. Her moving out gave me shares to the apartment and ensured my ability to run for the elections so I could become a board member. I wanted to fix our asbestos problem if I won. So my mom could move back into the house she spent her entire life in, our home, the one with all her memories. Anyone running for the election had to show how they'd be involved in the community. Old Peggy fed elderly residents free meals during the day. Charles helped with our summer fairs every year. Linda drops off flyers to each apartment door, notifying them when the water shut off. And me, I ate pies at a Black-owned business. But I lived in these apartments my entire life. No one else had that advantage. I know what we need as Harlem residents from the ground up. And people believed in me, called me a young Dr. June Jackson Christmas and shit. I told the community to come and see me beat you for the 10th year in a row. Got everybody talking about it, especially the old ones who needed something to be excited about. And after they saw how I reacted to you winning, I lost every, every fucking vote. Hmm. I was going to bake a pie with my shit in it and give it to you. <gasps> you know, how many did it from the help? That's where I got the idea. But I said, instead, be mature and just kick her ass this year. And I, You know what I did to you last week, right? You did something to me? I did. <laughs> Stop it. No, you didn't. All right. I didn't. I'll kill you. I'll do it. Put the pie knife down, Ebony. You make poor Winnie see another dead body. How inconsiderate. When we leave, I kill you. I ain't do anything. You still gonna die? Tonight, in your home. And I will flush your betta fish down the toilet. Ha <laughs> ha, my betta fish died five years ago. And what do you have now? 
a boyfriend. <laughs> Seriously? Isn't he like your first ever? Yeah, my first. We met because I DM'd him or whatever. Oh my God, what? He's changed my life completely. So happy for you, Nakisha. Let me see a pic. Of course. You won't kill him, right? He's black. Yeah. Enough said. I know who won. <gasps> oh, wow. First sign this paper I typed up. A contract? Holding you to your word. You practice law, don't you? Mm-mm. Nope. I'm a librarian. I typed something up on Word. If we break it, the rules of the contract, then what? I'm just trusting you won't. Isn't that enough? There's nothing I can actually do to stop you from... Okay, I won't break it. I promise. See? It's signed. Thank you. Here you go, Mrs. Robinson. I never saw the tape before today. It was heartbreaking. I wouldn't wish it on anyone seeing someone die so young. Seventy is so young. Sorry. You ate my last fourth. I'm so sorry. I ate 12 pies in the last six days. For me to know that her best competitor shared in the last one with me, that's all right. She would have wanted me to watch the tape, to hand out the last crown. Don't let this be the last year, please. You must have the recipes. Baking her pies? <laughs> I couldn't. You stopped leaving the competitions together in 2016. I remember that day. So did Barbara. We assumed your friendship had ended. You've known each other for how long? Since high school, in 2016, before the competition, I whispered to Nakisha. I said that she would choke on a pie and die on the spot, and no one would miss her. Very toxic. You both need to apologize. I overheard your conversation from my bedroom. I'm sorry. Look, I'm sorry that you were so insecure that you had to put allergy medicine in my milk. Bitch. Ebony. I'm sorry, Ebony. Who won? You didn't say we had to apologize and be friends to hear who won. Who won? Well, you have to understand that you both slammed the table at the same time, so... You both won. That's not enough, Winnie. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It is not fair to say that after making us sign a contract. Give me the camcorder. No! You need to. Put, put the knife down, Nikisha. Tie her up. Use your scarf. Oh. Oh. No, 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 no. Just, just, please, don't make me listen to it. Her agony. I have earplugs in my bedroom. Just... Please. Go get it. Give me your scarf. I'll do it. Oh. Come on. I, I would have given you the camcorder. No, you wouldn't. You have every right not to want to show us a tape. We just need to know. Oh, okay. 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 Ow. 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 Ooh. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Mm. Sorry. It'll only be for a little. All right. Fine. Nakisha, grab the recipes, too. Yeah. Help me. Help me. Quick. <gasps> I knew it! Barbara uses store brand unsalted butter, this fucking genius! Come here, let's watch. Skip to minute 14. That's when you both were at pie 30. Thank you. Sure. If I can just say, I love the color of your bedroom. Put the earplugs in my ears now. Oh? You look like an old oh. donkey when you eat. Oh, shut up. Look, stop relying on your teeth. Use your head and inner cheeks. That's how I win. We're not competing ever again, remember? Your advice is useless. Exactly why I gave it to you. So you couldn't use it. I'm dying! <laughs> I can't tell. Uh, go back. Go back. I'm dying! Ugh, make it go in 
in slow mo. Nice, Nikisha. Give me the camera. I want to take a picture on my phone as proof. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Ow! Dagger tooth? Don't bite me. Give me back my phone. Give it back. Give me the camcorder. <laughs> Winnie! <gasps> Winnie, why? The camcorder drowns in the milk I poured for you. Back up, back up, I mean it. Put down my recipes, they're mine. I will call the cops on you so fast. All right, all right. Get out of my brownstone now. Give me back my phone. What did you do to me this year? What? Look at my screensaver. Oh. You didn't drug me then? No, not this year. He was the confidence I needed. Your first boyfriend is my ex fiance? The one who broke up with me three weeks ago? Right. Nakisha. I'm getting the crown from the bedroom. Mm, mm, mm. She's shysty. I'd snuff her out if I was you. Well, at least the footage is gone, right? <laughs> she might get the crown, but I will make sure that no one thinks she won this year. Really? Really. I'll post on Barbara's Facebook page tonight that it was you who won. Oh. Wow. Mm-hmm. She stooped too low. Thank you. <clears throat> do, 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 do. <laughs> the crown looks amazing on me, doesn't it, Ebony? It does. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let's go. Hell no. You go first. I'll leave when I feel it's safe. Get the hell out of my house, both of you. Ooh, you'll need to repent for that, won't you, Winnie? I'll bring the pie knife with me then. <laughs> Oh, and I don't expect my prize money with the funeral expenses and all. Ebony, fuck with me and I'll cut you real deep. I won <laughs> nine years in a row. Everyone saw me crowned. You only had that once in 2019. I'm at peace with that. I'll mail the crowns in my house to you next week. Can I have my phone now? Bye, Ms. Robinson. Never come back, okay? All right. All right. Oh, baby, I can't believe you love those two. You summoned me? Barbara? I hear you in my head. Hello? Hello? I was assigned as your angel. Can I talk to you every day? And you'll talk back to me? Of course. Just say my name aloud to yourself. Not around other people, though. They'll think you're a unwell. Is heaven nice up there? Yes, very. <gasps> Guess what, baby? What? Jesus is black. <gasps> I'll tell you all about it. You've been listening to a new play, Ebony and Nikisha by Nia Akila Robinson, directed by Colette Robert. 
featuring Aaron Cherry as Ebony, Sharina Martin as Nikisha, Portia as Winnie, and Lizanne Mitchell as Barbara. Sound design was by A.J. Saraski Isasi. The staff of the Ensemble Studio Theater is Artistic Director William Carden, Executive Director Susan Vitucci, Associate Artistic Director, Director of the ESD Saloon Project, Co-Director of ESD Youngblood, and hopefully feeling better than he was at the top, Graham Gillis. Everything's coming up Dir- podcasts. <laughs> Director of Play Development and Associate Director of the ESD Saloon Project, Lindsay Furman. Co-Director of Youngblood, R.J. Tolan. That's me. Interim Managing Director, Nick Ward. Production Manager, Jack Plow. Brand Marketing Manager, Manager Harrison Densmore, Communications and Audience Services Manager Samantha Sembler, Company Administrator Mariel Sanchez, Development Associate Joey Nasta, and Facilities Manager Jose Sanchez. The Youngblood Monday Lunch theme song was written and performed by Youngblood's own Jake Brash and Nadia Leonhard Hooper. And the podcast sound engineer is Caroline Eng. Thank you so much for spending your late winter and impending early spring with us. We look forward to rejoining you in a couple of months with some new plays. We hope you'll tune in then. Thanks for coming. Be well, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Has anybody seen my wife? Sit down, shut up. It's time for lunch. Now we couldn't be prouder to present the Youngblood debut of play Ooh. of playwright Nia Akila Robinson. This is Ebony and Nikisha. It freaks Graham out every time I go woo for the new, uh, <laughs> for the debut. Why don't we, why don't we try that again? Say that all again and I'll, I'll woo. I'm going to woo though. So be ready. Be, I'm coming. It's ready. coming. Yeah. <laughs> We couldn't be prouder to present the Youngblood debut of Nia Akila Robinson. Mm. This is her play, <laughs> Ebony and Nikisha. <laughs> I literally told you. Literally told you. I, was gonna you, I won't woo. You, just don't do, do it. it. I just don't do want it. you to not do it. <laughs> you didn't leave a pause, so I decided to no, syncopate it. No, you come in on I had, the, to, I had to hit it on the backbeat. Yeah, beat. yeah, right, it's it on again. the backbeat. Do it again. That's do it again. the confusing part. Um, <laughs> <laughs>